Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about an S-curve chart, which is commonly used in project management. If you are wondering what the heck it is, you're about to find out. I'm Candace Porter. I'm excited to be here with you today. So what is an S-curve chart? An S-curve chart actually aims to represent the utilization of resources over the proposed time of your project. It's important to note that an S-curve is a graphical tool that displays cumulative data, and we're going to look at a forecast spend for a project over time. I have built this out in Excel, and you're going to have an opportunity to get this free template. So if you love this S-curve chart, you wanna try it out for yourself. Um, it's actually going to be able to be modified. So if you wanna change anything on it, it's all yours. I do wanna share the S-curve denotes the tendency of the cumulative curve from a shallow S shape so that's because you'll usually see a project start off fairly slow when we're talking about forecast spend. So we're talking about dollars invested during that project. Usually starts out relatively slow and then it significantly increases in the middle of the project. And then it really does slow down again towards the end of the project. When we take a look at this Excel, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about because I'm going to show you what it looks like. I'm going to show you how to create one and then you'll understand why it's called the S curve chart. It really does follow a shallow S much of the time. Okay, so let's take a look here at this Excel and again, stick around until the end of the video because I'm going to tell you exactly how you can get a copy of this Excel S curve chart. Okay, so what you're looking at here, just an Excel file that is built out as a template. So you can actually use this for your project. It is built out over a 12 month period. And again, you can customize it. If your project is shorter, if your project is longer, feel free to make it your own. There are two tabs on this actual Excel. One is the S-curve forecast spend tab. That's exactly what you're looking at right here. There is also a sheet instructions tab. And this is beautiful because if you're filling this out on your own, it's going to walk you through step by step. So you'll see here on the left hand side, there's step one, step two, step three, step four. It points to different cells within the Excel spreadsheet. And then over here on the right hand side, it gives a little bit more of an explanation on the different formulas that are set up and what green font in our total forecast spend cell means versus red font. So once you get a copy of this actual file, then you'll be able to set it up on your own. In the meantime, I'm going to walk you through what it looks like. So right here, project name, very first um, kind of cell that you'll want to fill out at the top. I'm going to fill this out as effective flow connections, office build out. So we're going to build out a new office. And so that's what this is going to focus on. You'll see once I click enter, that that is going to title the top of my S curve chart. So this is set up very simply. Total project budget. Our total project budget for this, let's say $80,000. I'm just going to enter 80,000 in there. And you will see that once I entered it in this cell, so it also populated over here in my remaining budget cell. I'll walk you through that momentarily. I've got the start date. It's already default in here for January, 2023. Let's say that this is actually going to be March 2023 and that it's going to run through November 2023. So I'm going to put 03123. And when I just hit enter, 
you may have seen that row eight here, that it automatically updated the month and year to align with the project start date that I entered in there. So it's automatically going to enter the month that the project's starting, and it's going to calculate out the following 12 months. So this is set up to be project quarters. So quarter one, March, April, May, quarter two, June, July, August, quarter three, September, October, November. And I actually said that this project was going to end by November, 2023. So I'm going to update this next cell, project end date, put November, 2023. And I can actually just delete if I want the project quarter four, since there's only really going to be three quarters in this project. So everything's set up now. I've got the name of the project here, total project budget of $80,000, March 2023 project start date, November 2023 project end date, and you will see that the project quarter one aligns with the project start date, so March 2023, and it ends November 2023 because I did manually delete the months that fell within project quarter four. Now, what we need to do is think about what months are we actually going to spend that $80,000? And this can be important because maybe your company is going to need to inject cash into your project at certain points. And if you follow and track cash flow, it can be really important. How much cash on hand do I have? And when am I gonna need certain dollar amounts to invest in projects? So that's a really great purpose of the S-curve chart because we wanna be really clear, especially if we're a medium-sized organization, a larger organization, and we are trying to come up with an annual budget, we may need to roll all of these projects up and know exactly what month we're going to need to distribute funds to different projects. So that is one great purpose for this S-curve chart. So let's say that we have already talked to the general contractor that's going to be in charge of our office build out. We know exactly what it's gonna look and feel like. There's a project schedule associated with it. And with that project schedule, we have dollar amounts aligned with each of the tasks, some of the materials that are gonna be needed, maybe the actual invoices that are going to be billed by the general contractor, which is going to include their labor and whatnot. So we know that our project is going to start out relatively slow in March. We're gonna spend, let's say $5,000 a month in that first quarter for each of those months. So we've got that in there. You will see as I enter it that there's a total spend line here. So what this is doing is adding them up. So $5,000 is spent in March, $5,000 more is spent in April. So that's my cumulative spend here on that total spend line. 5,000 more gives me 15. Whenever we're looking at May 2023 is the cumulative spend. That is actually now adding it to my S-curve chart. It doesn't look like an S-curve yet, but it will because our spend then is going to increase and it's gonna go up to $10,000 um, once we hit June, 2023. Then it's gonna go up to 15,000 and then it's gonna go up to 20,000. And again, this is the monthly spend so we've got 20,000 as our monthly spend in August, 2023. And then if you look down below, that is the cumulative spend. So from March to August, we're going to have spent $60,000 of our $80,000 project budget. At least that's what we're forecasting. You'll see here in the upper right-hand corner that total forecast spend it is actually in green font. That means we're good here. I have $20,000 remaining in my budget as I'm filling this out. And that $60,000 cumulative spend is that same number that you're gonna see up here for the total forecast spend. Well, 
Now we're getting towards that last quarter of the project. Our spend is going to start slowing down again. It's going to start maybe tapering off as we get into that final quarter. So we're only going to spend $10,000 in September 2023, and then maybe $5,000 more in October of 23, and then $5,000 more in November of 23. So you will see here, we now have an actual S curve chart. And again, when we're talking about the cumulative spend, so the total spend, it's starting out slow. We're looking at the teal line here. It's starting out slow. It starts to significantly increase about the middle of the project because we're looking over time here. And then it starts to slow down again and flatten out a bit. This is what we're talking about when we're talking about the S curve. So there we go. That teal line is representative of our S curve. Our monthly spend is going to be this gray line. So you'll see that it is simply plotting our monthly. So for March of 2023, we have 5,000 in there, April 5,000, May 5,000. When we get into June, it goes up to 10,000. So that's what we're looking at with the gray line. Now, it may also be a good idea if you want to track actual spend on your S-curve chart. So you could always go back in and add that as another row and track actuals versus your forecast monthly spend in here. So right now, this is just our forecast that we have in here. One other cool thing that I would like to point out to you regarding this S-curve template is that if we go over our actual total project budget, let's say for October 2023, oh, I think we're actually going to spend 7000 in October of 23. If I switch that, oh, it's now going to turn to red up here for my total forecast spend, and it's going to show that I'm over by $2,000. So green means good, red means bad, when we're keeping an eye on the upper right hand corner here. And the way that that is calculating out, it's looking at our total project budget here. So that's one of the second things that we entered in this form. And it is looking at what we have entered in row number nine here. So our monthly spend row. So I'll put that back at 5,000 again, might be great if you want to add another row to this template. So when you're actually moving throughout your project, you're in execution, you could track actuals in here. It could plot a third line on this actual S curve chart, and that'll let you know if you are on track. I hope that this has been beneficial for you. Um, S curve charts, they're really great. A lot of people are visual people. They tell a good story. It's great for you to share this with some of your key stakeholders, maybe your project sponsor. And again, it can really help them understand, okay, over time, this is when we expect to be putting the most type of cash into this project. Again, I am Candice Porter, founder and managing director of Effective Flow Connections. I do a lot of consulting on project management, change management, a lot of leadership development, and actually do a lot of training. So if you want a copy of this S curve chart template, then I would like to let you know how you can get a copy. It's great, it's handy. You can definitely impress some people by using it. So the way to get a copy of this, subscribe to this channel. You can click the little bell down below and then go to the main page of the channel. So go to the main page and you're gonna see a little tab kind of bar there where you can click on different tabs. There's one called community. So if you click on the community tab, it's pretty much like a live kind of blog or whatnot where there's articles that are posted there. I share a lot of valuable information about project management, show some of the stuff that Project Management Institute is sharing, and you will see March, 2022, that there was a post with a link in there to get that S curve chart. So again, just to reiterate, subscribe to this channel, 
go to the main YouTube page and then look for the community tab, click on that, and you will see in those updates that are posted there that there is a link directly to this S-curve chart template so you can download it and make it your own. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you again in the future. Bye-bye.